Shalom everyone and welcome to Reboot the Root. So as you can see behind me, I have a secret message if you can catch on to it. There is a, uh, there is a safety sign behind me. It is, a, it is also a law. It's, a, it's part of the local American traffic laws. And so that's what we're going to be talking about in this series of Reboot the Root. We're going to be talking about the law. And so what we want to do is we want to investigate that thing that has been missing from the background of Christianity, just as you see the safety sign in the background behind me. So we're gonna be looking at God's law and we're gonna see how it applies to Christianity today. And uh, so join me, if you will, in this episode of Above the Law. Shalom. <laughs> Shalom everyone and welcome to Reboot the Root. Here at Reboot the Root, I'm trying to teach you about walking in the ways of Yahweh by understanding God's instructions or otherwise known as God's law. And so a lot of us <clears throat> have grown up really not knowing about all the things that are in God's law, but it's enough to say that God's law is what he, how he expects us to behave, how he acts, how he expects us to um, to walk with him, and so he's given us a standard of instructions for us to walk by. So this is the series called Above the Law, and this is episode 21, and this is Reboot the Root, where we're continuing to challenge the doctrines of man by exposing the truth behind what we do and why we do the things in our beliefs. And, and if you've been with me any length of time watching these series of videos and other videos, you know the spill by now that Reboot the Root exists to uh, encourage you as the Bible student to study the Word, to show yourself approved, and to test everything, to find out where do your doctrines come from, and to find out the truth behind a lot of the things that we have not understood about God's word. And so one of the probably the biggest points of controversy in studying the law, which this is uh, what this um, series is about, is that we misunderstand the Pauline letters, mostly Galatians and Hebrews and Romans. And we misunderstand what Paul is teaching about the law because we don't understand it from a Torah perspective. So that's why it's good to know from a Torah perspective what Paul is talking about. Also, we have to understand it from a Hebraic perspective. And so at Reboot the Root, I'm trying to teach you some of the things that I have learned and am currently learning about how to study the Bible from a Hebrew perspective and not an American or English perspective. Because that's what our problem really boils down to, is we tend to read the Bible from an English perspective, but we need to understand that the Bible, especially the New Testament, was written from a Hebraic and not a Greek perspective. True enough, most of the scriptures we have are in Greek, but that's just the Greek perspective and that's just the translation of it. I believe that the New Testament uh, was written with a Hebraic perspective and uh, so we have to learn from it thinking like a Hebrew, okay? So anyway, that's, that's my opening monologue for Reboot the Root. And again, this is episode 21 of Above the Law, where we're learning about how to apply the law to a New Testament Christian belief. And I want to start off by saying that we, we have, we, the past 20 episodes, We've hit it kind of hard about talking about what it is to walk in the law, but we have to be careful that we don't become legalistic about it, that we don't become terroristic about it, where we beat not only others up over it, but we don't beat ourselves up with it either. The law was meant to guide us and to teach us, teach us how to come to Yeshua, how to come to Christ. And so we have to apply the law with love. 
we also have to apply the law with spirit. So there is a thing called the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. And I've seen too many people out there beat other people up where they're just plain mean about it and they're heartless and cruel and cold about it. And that's not what Yeshua came to do. Yeshua came to teach us how to embrace the law in the right heart, with the right perspective. And so we can't get legalistic about it and we can't get stringent and, and we definitely cannot apply it with the letter of the law because the scripture says the letter of the law kills but the spirit gives life. So enough of that, let's continue on here in episode 21. So last episode, episode 20, we were talking about the power of sin, okay? And we're going to uh, first do a little re review of last week of where we were at with talking about the power of sin. So we started, at, I started asking, why is man a sinner? And I was teaching you that a man is a sinner because he broke God's law. And so we have to understand that the law is more than just the Ten Commandments, that there's some 613 commandments. So there are many laws that we keep that we don't even really know that we're keeping that are part of our uh, core beliefs. But we also have to understand that uh, we as mankind have to approach God's law with a, uh, an application or lens of grace, okay? Uh, grace, not only grace, but also mercy and kindness. We have to um, allow the, the instructions of God to produce the fruit in our lives. So there are fruits, um, there are fruits of the flesh as just as much as there are fruits of the spirit and we're going to get into more on that in the very last episode. Uh, and so when we, when we are looking at, at applying God's law to our lives, we have to come to, uh, to them with a heart of grace to not only to ourselves but to others and that grace only comes to us through our faith in Yahshua. And so well, after we become saved, we want to return back to uh, God's instructions uh, because uh, this is how we became, we became distant or separated from God to begin with, is that we were separated from God because we sinned. So after salvation, we should study and learn how can we turn to God by obeying his instructions. And then we were also talking about why is man a sinner? Man is a sinner because he had broke God's law and um, and so we know that um, commonly commonly understood is that uh, people break the law mostly by the terms of the Ten Commandments or the Asheret HaDabrot okay Asheret HaDabrot is Hebrew for the Ten Commandments but we already know there's more than Ten Commandments and uh, we know that is true because a lot of us we know that there are things that are wrong that we shouldn't do. Um, they're in our core values, not only in Christianity, but in society as a whole. Like for example, um, uh, homosexuality, uh, we know is wrong, but that's not in the Ten Commandments. That is in another place in the Torah. So we do know that there are other laws that we are supposed to keep that are not in the Ten Commandments. This is just a starting point. Okay, so now we want to continue on here with some new information. So what did Jesus do for sin? Did J Jesus come to do away with his law? Or did he come to deal with the transgressor, the transgressors? Okay, that's an important question to ask. So, so by looking, looking and studying scripture, we can see that Jesus came to take away the sins that we as mankind, um, men and women that is, have, have committed because we know in, in uh, 1 John 3, 4, it says that sin is the transgression of the law, God's law. So in, in, in understanding this concept and understanding why did Yeshua hang on the cross, we know that he did not come to take away his instructions. He has always told us already that he could, did not come to destroy the law, 
but to fill, fulfill the law. So let's take a look at this logically. Do you really think that Yeshua came to die to do away with his law? Um, because he gave his law originally, there was a reason for it, it's for our benefit. So why would he take away something that is for our benefit? So Jesus dies for sinners, for the transgressors, but he does not die to take away his laws. Um, sin did not have a relationship with God, but we do. We have a relationship with God. So sin does not have a relationship with God, but this sin was actually created by man through his disobedience. And we look at that in the Garden of Eden in chapter 3 of Genesis. He disobeyed and thus sin was created. Jesus came when he died on the cross to take away our sins we have committed. He didn't die to, um, to do away with his law. The death of Yeshua never was meant to cancel the Mosaic law. We've studied, we can study in the Pauline letters many, uh, many times where the, Paul, where the law is meant to teach us. It's our tutor. It's supposed to bring us to Christ. But we are never supposed to just leave the law behind and say, okay, I, nothing in the law applies to me. That's actually a very ridiculous um, idea to say that we can actually at any point achieve a status of being a lawbreaker where we don't need God's standard or instructions. And, and, and when we do identify ourselves as sinners, what we're doing is we are admitting that we have committed sin by breaking God's law. And so the Above the Law series that I'm doing here really is addressing some things here. Let's go over some of those ideas that we're addressing. We're addressing the idea of law versus grace. So a lot of people tend to think of the Old Testament as the age of law and the New Testament as the age of grace. But don't you know that both law and grace exist both in the Old and New Testament? So there, this idea which may be taught in a lot of seminaries is not the, um, the biblical idea. Where we have God, where we have God working in different ways with man, that's just not biblical. Okay, so uh, law and grace exists both in uh, Old Testament and New Testament applications. Uh, in this above the law series, we um, we are looking at um, some some um, theological concepts that might be opposing. Um, this idea of having God's instructions in our lives. We need to know that God's, God's law and God's grace often exist together when we look at it, especially in the Old Testament and the New Testament. We see many times in the New Testament writer, writings that there is the existence of, of grace right alongside with law. And the same thing in the Old Testament we see where God is merciful, God is kind, God is gracious towards man. Probably the biz, big example of law and grace is probably in the Garden of Eden, where, where man broke the law, the law was there. He disobeyed, bringing sin in the world, but then God gave him grace and prevented him from eating from the tree of life, which would have made him uh, a a, a person that would forever exist in sin without any kind of hope of redemption. Uh, we're in, in the Above the Law uh, series here, we are tackling the idea of are we under law, are we under grace? And we're learning about grace by faith and we're learning about the concept of law in salvation. I know that's these are some hard things to to really come to grips with since we've been taught just the opposite. We've always been taught in church that we are not under law, but we're under grace and that we're no longer under the law and we don't have to keep God's law anymore. Or we've been taught that, it, that, it's, that it's been um, something that only the Jews or the Israelites do. But we're learning these new things that are new and strange to us that all of a sudden now we have to deal with the law and we have to start learning what are the laws that we have not been keeping? So the law is not done with, but the doctrines of man in his religion 
destroy the need for God's law and he establishes his own traditions of doctrines. Uh, in Matthew 5.17, it addresses this. Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So destroy is defined as to cause something to end or no longer exist. Can we say that about God's word? Is God's law, in fact, God's word? Yes, of course it is. So do you think Yeshua came to do away with his word? Does that really register as sense to us? Matthew 5.18, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Now how has everything been fulfilled? Is heaven and earth still here? Uh, if you have to say that heaven and earth are still here and, and, and not everything has been fulfilled, then not one little bit of the law has passed away, okay? So these are some key, ex um, key um, uh, tenets of our truth that we have had missing. We have had missing from our doctrine. Uh, let's take a look at the reasoning of the law. The reasoning of man brought him into sin. Adam, Adam re reasoned that he would disobey, but he also knew what the consequence was. So any decision we make, there's always a consequence. There's an equal and opposite reaction. We sin, or any bad decision we make, there's a consequence. The lie, the lie was told there to Adam and Eve that caused the man to reason with God's commandment. So what does that mean to reason with God's commandment? That means that he was, he was trying, perhaps he was trying to understand uh, what his position was in disobeying um, God's commandment. So actually, what happened in the story, if you recall, in Genesis 3, that the woman was deceived by the serpent. And, um, and the woman was tricked into thinking that the tr forbidden tree and its fruit was something to be desired. It was good for food. And it seemed she reasoned with it by being deceived. But on the other hand, Adam, he was not in the same position as Eve was. I believe, this is just my, my understanding, my opinion, is that Adam reasoned, would he want to be alone in the garden without the woman? Because if he had decided not to disobey, but yet Eve did, he just might be alone all by himself. And did he want to live without the woman? He reasoned in his mind disobedience. So a lie was told that would cause the man to reason and the woman to reason with God's commandment. The commandment, um, if you recall, was not to eat from the forbidden tree. And why was it forbidden? Why was, why was this tree so off limits to the man? Well, it contained knowledge. And now we've seen over the years what has happened when man has had knowledge. We even have people today who are still picking from that forbidden tree. And it all has to do with knowledge. When you start picking from the, picking from the extra books and picking, picking from um, ideas that are not contained in scripture, you in, a, you in effect are still eating from that forbidden tree because that tree contained the knowledge that the man was not supposed to have. So he had this commandment, not to eat from it. And also existed, I believe, is so that the man's love for the Creator could be tested. That we want to see if, if the man would be rebellious or would he be obedient. So the lie of reason is this. Did God really say that? Now, you look in the scripture, the serpent doesn't say that. But, but in essence, that's what he's saying. He's saying to Hava, to Eve. Did God really say that? So the, the serpent is trying to reason a deception with the woman. And so the woman, not wanting to be alone, she gives the fruit to the man too. And they both reason disobedience among themselves. 
The reasoning of man continues to challenge the validity of God's law even today. To even say, is God's law still to be obeyed? Um, the argument from Scripture is we are no longer under the law and the Mosaic law has been done with. That's a very common theological statement among Christianity today is to say that the, the law is not for us. So let's take a look at some scriptures here that will challenge this idea. 1 John 3, 4, which we have, we have talked about many times. Well, why not read it again? <laughs> Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth, transgresseth also the law, for sin is transgression of the law. So if there is no law, there can be no sin. So ask yourself the question, am I a sinner? If your answer is yes, then there has to be a law in effect that you have transgressed. 1 John 3, 5, And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. So this is what Yeshua came to do, is he came to take away our sins. So you remember a little while ago I was, I was asking the question, did Yeshua come to take away his law? Well, this verse here in 1 John 3, 5 answers that. It says he was manifested to take away our sins. It doesn't say he was manifested to take away his law. In other words, Yeshua didn't come to take away, um, take away the law. The law is not the problem. The problem is our disobedience. Jesus took away our sins. Uh, we have committed against the law, but he did not come to take away the law. Matthew 5, 17, Think not I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And so that's the question of the day. What does it mean to fulfill? And what Yeshua came to do, um, it, came, it came to fulfill the law <clears throat> by making it more full, by bringing a better understanding of what it is to live out the Torah. If everyone has sinned, then everyone has broken God's law. Well, I believe there's verses that say that all have sinned. And if there is no law, there can be no sin to be forgiven of. Romans 4.15 For the Torah works out wrath, for where there is no Torah, there is no transgression. In some versions that word Torah may say law. So we could say for the Torah works out wrath, for where there is no law, there is no no transgression. So how can you tran how can you be a transgressor if there is no law to transgress? First John 1:10, if we say that we have not sinned, we have made him a liar and his word is not in us. So now we are establishing the fact that we have broken a law because if there if there if there is no Torah, then how could we sin? Uh, Romans 5:12 for this reason even, the, even as through one man sin did enter the world, that was Adam, and death through sin, that's because of Adam, Adam and thus death spread to all men, that's because of his sin, uh, because all sin. So let's back this up a little bit. For this reason, even as through one man, that was Adam, sin came into the world because, so because Adam disobeyed, he brought sin and death and decay into the world and, and it spread to everyone. So because of one man's disobedience, you and I have sin. But there's good news because of one, the second man, the second Adam, Yeshua, he came to take away the sin that the first man brought. <clears throat> uh, let's talk a little bit about the moral law that a lot of people seem to think that that uh, when it comes to law keeping that they'll say that that uh, we no longer have to keep um, all these different laws we only have to keep the moral law so this moral laws or the mishpatim relate to justice and judgment are often translated as ordinances if you read this in your bibles mishpatim are said to be based on god's holy nature okay and this would include the ten commandments even though they do take out the fourth uh, most of the time modern protestants are divided over the the acclability of mishpatim in the church age which 
let's bring that down to common English. Um, most of uh, church denominations today, they are having a trouble of how do you apply the law of God and his ordinances in this age that they think we live in, which is called the church age. And so, um, age to age, God remains the same and he never changes. We're not living in different ages of how God deals with. It's always been the same way God deals with us with grace. And um, so uh, a lot of people, they wrestle with this idea of, of, of do I incorporate God's law that I believe is for Jews or Israelites or something that's in the past that we longer have to do. They wrestle with the fact that, that if they do that, they are become lawless and they're without a standard. <clears throat> the trouble with the law. Uh, let's talk about that now. The theological fallacy in doctrine over keeping God's law trips many biblical believers. In error, they believe that they are above the law, that it doesn't apply to them. When it comes to the Mosaic law, two areas trouble Christians in their, obedi in their obedience the most. Can you guess what they are? Well, if you guess the Sabbath day and the dietary laws, you would be right. So a lot of, a lot of Christians have uh, mistakenly, they have followed the, the lie, the deception, that the Sabbath day was replaced by Sunday. So if you want to know more about that subject, watch my other teaching called From Sunday to Sabbath, and you'll learn more about how that got changed. And then the other thing they, um, they wrestle with is the dietary laws or eating kosher because they seem to think that's just for Jewish people and that doesn't apply to them. So if you want to know more about this subject, watch the other teaching that I'm doing parallel to this one. It is called Good for Food, which talks about the dietary laws. They also believe, when I say they, the Christian, the Christian theology, believes that the Old Testament laws are no longer in effect for today for a variety of reasons. Uh, but when it boils down to it, there's this idea that believes that God's laws are just too inconvenient for our lifestyles today. So I believe that what exists out there today is that people say, well, you know what, we live in a different time, so those laws really just don't apply to us today. But God's word stands true throughout the ages, does it not? Um, so um, let's talk a little bit about a character in the Bible that we're familiar with. That, that he gives us a good life lesson about obedience, about how do we obey God and we obey his law. And so that, um, that character I'm referring to is called, well, actually it's two characters. It's Abraham and Isaac. Okay, so we're familiar with the story of Abraham and Isaac. And just in case you're not familiar, Abraham, who his name used to be called Abram, he was the first Hebrew. He was the father of our faith. So um, Abraham is the, um, the father of three monotheistic religions. That would be Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. But uh, what happens with Abraham, him being the father of our faith, um, he is the father of, um, of Hebrews and Israelites. And the first uh, seed that he produces is Isaac. Isaac is his son. And there's so many pictures we could talk about involving Abraham and Isaac, but I'll choose one, which Abraham represents the father, and Isaac re represents the son, the father meaning God, and the son being Yeshua, okay? <clears throat> so Abraham, he was instructed to take his son Isaac at, up to Mount Moriah, and sacrifice him. Now Abraham could have pleaded with God and said, why? Why should I do that? But no, Abraham didn't. He obeyed. He obeyed without questioning God, which he shows us a great picture of obedience. Abraham did not question God, as in why, but Abraham, Abraham reacted immediately to obey God. Abraham did not re react to God's instructions like some of us would, but, but, um, but, in, but instead of asking why, he, he, he chose to obey and because of this, because he trusted God. So when we obey God's instructions, we should do it in the same manner. It's not to question God, 
but to just obey. Abraham did not ask God to explain his reasoning or his instructions, but later God explained his reason for this, for he says, I know that thou fearest God. So it was a test. It was one of the ten tests of Abraham that Abraham endured. And, and I believe that it's possible that this test of Abraham may have been the same test that Adam went through. But in the differences, Abraham uh, passed his test, Adam did not. Well, this is a good place to stop for episode 21 of Above the Law. And uh, we're going to continue next episode. We're going to be talking about reasons why we should be keeping God's law or some reasons why people think that we shouldn't do the law. Both things we're going to talk about. Okay, so this is the end of this episode 21 of Above the Law. Thank you for joining me here with Reboot the Root and invite you to come back for episode um, 22 as we continue to uh, look into Above the Law. And if you're not a subscriber, please take this time now to subscribe to this channel so you can get the notifications for the rest of the series that I will produce in the coming weeks. And also you'll get notifications for all the new videos I'll be putting out. Also take time to like this video if you liked it and please leave a, a respectful comment down below. Uh, make sure that your comments don't have animosity in it, don't have um, a meanness to it. And please feel free to ask questions if I, haven't an, if I haven't addressed anything in this series about the law, please um, present your question in the comment section below, and I'll be happy to address it. And uh, so for now, uh, this is Reboot the Roots saying Shalom.